Hello, this is Gil, your host on According to You, where the listeners get to pick the topic of conversation. But on this special 10-part series I call Local Business, I invite the local small businesses owners and go behind the scenes, which will be filmed and recorded in Preland, Pennsylvania. We'll talk about the ups and downs of 2020, how some survived, and some did not have the means to move forward. We'll go behind the scenes and ask the owners how they started and what motivated them in opening the type of business they own. So with no further delay, my first guest, who owns a deli in Freeland, let's welcome Mr. Francisco. Hello, thank you for having me on the show. Well, thank you for being on the show. I understand that you're a very busy uh, cook, and I know that you don't have the time to be coming in and out, but I do appreciate that you are here. And as I, ex- I explained to everybody that what we're doing is pretty much um, introducing the owners of the local area. And we want to know the behind the scenes. So the first question I'm going to ask you is, how did you get involved in the art of cooking? Well, it's a long story. When I come to United States, I work in New Jersey. I started watching Pat and Pen, but I get excited when I see the dish coming out. So I asked the chef, so you can, can help me out to be a, come a cook. And then a short time, I become a cook in New Jersey. And then after that, I run a couple of hotel and a restaurant. And that's my, my art. And that's what become a cook in Jersey. Okay, so when you say you're a cook, are you like a fast cook or are you a chef or like what what what's your what would be your title when somebody tells you or ask you what type of cook you are you? Well, I uh, I might am a little bit of everything. I can be I can make, consider myself a chef. I can consider myself a cook. You quite can do anything. Okay, when you say anything and you say I consider myself a chef. What constitutes a person to be a chef? What is it that you need to cook that says, you know what, this guy's a chef? Okay. It's easy. Chef don't cook. And then I'm a cook. And I can come, I, become, I can become a chef. I can be a chef because I can take a pen and, and piece of paper and become a chef. But I don't like it. I like to be in, behind the line. Okay, no, I, I, can, I appreciate that. I think we all should appreciate that because I, I know myself, I go to your place and I enjoy all the different types of food that you have. You have Italian food, you have Spanish food. And, and this is pretty difficult to do when, when you can cook so many different types of uh, dishes. And you also have this one particular sandwich that you make, that I think a lot of people come to your place and, and purchase there. Is that true? Yes. Okay. And what, what, what are these sandwiches? Do they have numbers on them? Do you have a name for them? Well, so I have the number one. Mm. The most selling sandwich in my store is number one, number four, and number six. Okay. And what is the number one? The number one is the Italian cold cut sandwich. Okay. Have you ever thought, do you remember, and, I, and I'm also going to be speaking to the, uh, the listeners, does anybody remember the uh, company called Blimpies where they did sandwiches? Do you remember that yes, company? Yes, I do. This in New York City. Yeah, that's right. And, now, and then they also came out with Subways. Yes. Which they also make sandwiches. Yes. Well, if you don't mind, and I don't know what, what people, how people are going to react to it, but I'd like to call your number one, number four, and number six. Is that the three that you said that are the... That's the most popular sandwich. In my the story. most popular ones. Yeah, I think I'm going to call them torpedoes. Is that okay with you? Can I walk in and say, can I have the number one torpedo? You're welcome. Yeah, okay, <laughs> well, you know what? I think that, well, that's what I'm going to do. I don't know about anybody else, but that's what I'm going to do. Here's a question for you. You mentioned New York. Are you originally from New York? When I come to United States, yes. I'm in Manhattan by William Bird Bridge. That's my house. Okay. And a few months later, I moved out to New Jersey. And then from New Jersey, uh, as a little father to come to work. And then I moved close. I moved to Wayne. And from Wayne, I don't like it. I go back to Brooklyn. 
And from Brooklyn, I go back to New Jersey. <laughs> okay. There's a lot of places that you can go to. Why Freeland? What's Freeland has a special, uh, what you call, what you call it? It's like a special, like uh, when you come to Freeland, it's like you want to stay. When you come from town like Patterson, New Jersey, or Brooklyn, okay, you come to play like Freeland, so quiet town like this, you don't want to go back. Okay, so it's so different. When you come to Freeland, you see the peace, and then you want to grow up your family and play like this. Okay, well, that's great. Um, so what you're saying is the environment is different, yes. Okay, so the people around Freeland are more friendlier and they're more outgoing. And it's a family type of place that you would want to have your kids in. Well, you walk into to, to a street in Paris or a street in New York, nobody say hello to you. Gotcha. You come into Freeland, you raise your arm, everybody say hello to you. Right. Okay. They don't they don't see color, they don't see nationality. They, you raise their arm, they say hello to you. Wow, that's, you see, that's you great. Do, you don't see that in New York, you don't see that in New Jersey. Okay, I like that. Um, well, see, now me personally, I know this is not about me, but I live here about over 20 years. And I am originally from New York and the Bronx. Okay. And so I am going to agree with you as far as raising kids. Yes. My kids were eight and two. Um, and I did great with them. But like I said, this is not about me. Uh, but I do agree with you. Thank you. In the year 2020, it was a tough year for all types of businesses. How did it affect you and your family? Did it affect you bad, good, and different? Yes, it affected me very bad, and uh, I almost shut down. Okay. But every single time uh, someone walk in through the door, especially from Freeland, all the town around Freeland, like Drums, Whitehaven, and uh, Jero, all these little town, they come in, they give me a, a like a, like a, a little push out. They keep saying, "Please don't close. Better times comes in. Don't close." And as a lot of people told me, "They don't close, Francisco. It's gonna be better. It's going to be better." I closed for two weeks, and then, uh, and the time I closed down, I keep saying to my wife, "I believe we're gonna do better." When yeah. I opened the door back, and two 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 and a half week later, I opened the door, I see. The support I have for Freeland people and the little town around like Jero, uh, Drums, Whitehaven, okay. that they support me, very good. Because I stay open, I pay my bill. So I mean, I appreciate what the town, Freeland and the little town around Freeland do for me. Okay. Well, that's that's beautiful. Yeah. Um, you hear that, Freeland? We all thank you for that. And all the other towns around you. Um, with that said, I know that your time is... Um, precious and I do appreciate the fact that you came down um, so I hope that the people are listening um, it's a great story and I'm going to let go ahead and say goodbye and hopefully I'll have you on the show again in the year 2022 and see how 21 came out because this is a new year yeah. and, and one of the reasons why I'm doing this is because I want things to change to the better 2020 is the past let's move forward for all businesses, whether you're a small business, a medium business, whether you've been here for years, or even whether you just started a business and you're opening up a place, it would be nice to everybody to support each other, not just the locals, but the businesses themselves, yes. where you could say somebody walked in and bought one of those torpedo sandwiches and you turn around and say, well, you know, they may want to ask you, well, what can I get a, uh, I don't know, a screwdriver? You turn around and say, what? Listen, you know what? Right down the block, they sell. Everybody looks out for everybody, and I think we'll be doing a lot better this year than we did last year. With that said, I thank you again and hope to see you soon. Thank you for having me. Have a good one. Thank you. Okay, guys, that's it for now. But I hope that I actually have a um, an upcoming guest, which is, I'm not going to tell you his name, but he is the, uh, the new... Uh, business that opened up right across the street from uh, Cisco and that would be the barber but we're going to catch up with him and hopefully we'll have him on the show very soon but that's it I'm going to leave you with this keep listening and keep talking <laughs>